Hey, this is Chris. Hope you're doing well and welcome to Popcorn Finance, the show where we discuss finance in about the time it takes to make a bag of popcorn. So last week, we tackled a listener question talking about fees when it comes to mutual funds, but they had a part two of that question. They wanted to know more about the fees associated with the and the people selling you these investments, the advisors, the companies involved. And last week we had Caleb Silver on, so I thought it was only appropriate to have him back on again. So Caleb Silver, editor-in-chief of Investopedia.com, how are you doing? Great. Good to be with you as always, Chris. I'm such a big fan of Popcorn Finance. No, I appreciate it. I'm a big fan of Investopedia. Happy to have you on again to answer this part two. So just to refresh everyone's mind, I'll just read the whole part here. Uh, this came from Regina and she asked uh, if we could discuss the hidden costs of mutual funds, which we did last week. So go back, check out that episode. Caleb gave us some great details on mutual fund fees. Uh, and then she also wanted to know uh, about the fees associated with those financial companies and advisors that sell them. And so we had to make a couple, a few like kind of inferences about the questionnaire because we didn't get a lot of detail. Uh, but I'm assuming she's talking about the fees like financial companies are charging. So maybe like uh, banks or brokers or other financial service companies that are out there. Uh, so I want to lean on your expertise here and just kind of, first of all, why would you end up working with one of these types of organizations when you want to invest your money? Great question. And a lot of people like to do it themselves. There's a lot of DIY investors out there. And for them, they can use online brokers or robo advisors, or even their bank might have uh, an online platform or an app where you can do your own investing. But if you want more hands-on service, if you want more help either selecting securities for your portfolio or just more holistic planning, that's why you're going to pay an expert. That's why they're worth the fees and that's why they charge the fees. But it's important to know uh, where you're going to be paying the most fees and for what, and make sure there's clarity on that. So let's just break this apart a little bit. If you're going to buy a mutual fund, you're going to pay fees. Mutual funds come with fees. That's for the management of that mutual fund. You're paying the manager of the fund and all the research folks and the marketing folks to put that mutual fund together, make sure they have the right stock selected and they're allocating in the right percentages and also marketing it so they can bring in more assets under management. That requires some fees. If you There's also sales fees, uh, as we talked about last week. So when you buy a mutual fund, you're going to pay transaction fees. There's marketing fees baked into that. If you sell out of that mutual fund, you're going to get uh, charged for that as well. There's exchange fees if you switch mutual funds. Mutual fund fees usually total between somewhere between 1% and 3% of your investment. So keep that in mind. Now, if you're moving on and you're actually working with a broker, a human being who's placing trades for you and picking securities, you're going to pay them a fee too. A lot of folks don't want to pay human beings to pick their stock. So they do it through an online broker or a robo advisor if they want to uh, buy ETFs. So if, if you're working with an actual stock broker, they're going to charge you a fee as well. But if you're working with a financial advisor or a financial planner, well, nowadays, al almost all of them are what we call fiduciaries, right? So they charge fees for their service. Uh, and a lot of them are what we call fee only, but their fees are very upfront. And all good advisors these days are telling you what they charge for, why they charge for it. And some of them charge you incrementally for things, but they're very clear on that. And they have to be by law. It's the fiduciary rule. It's not exactly a rule, uh, the law of the land yet, but it's pretty much recognized by all financial advisors and planners out there. So for example, Chris, if you want someone to do your insurance, you're going to pay a fee for insurance. If you want someone to manage your portfolio and manage your assets, typically you're going to pay a fee. Maybe it's 1% of the assets under management. If you have you know, $100,000 in there with a financial advisor, they may charge you 1% a year for the management of your money. That's the kind of fee you're going to pay for, but they're the ones that are out there doing the portfolio allocation, picking stocks, rebalancing for you, doing the work that you really don't want to do if you don't have the time as an individual investor. So it sounds like the more hands-on help you're looking for. So there's all these automated or maybe a prepackaged, non-customized investment options out there that work for, for, for many of us. I know that's, that's primarily how I end up investing. Uh, but if you want a little more hands-on, if you need help with other things outside of just, you know, picking what's going to go into your portfolio, portfolio, that's where these other fees would start to come into play. Absolutely. But if you've noticed in the in the brokerage industry for the among the online brokers, and it kind of started with Robinhood, but now it's all of them, they don't charge fees anymore for the trading of stocks. There's no commissions for the trading of stocks. So even if you're working with a with a financial advisor and they're trading stocks for you or building your portfolio, they are going to charge you a fee because they're actually doing that hard work in the research. So that's what you're paying for. But financial planning and working with a financial advisor is about more than just 
pick stocks for me and build my portfolio. You want holistic planning. Again, that is everything from insurance to family planning, retirement planning, maybe end of life care or health care. So you want an advisor or a planner that's going to help you with that full service of options. And every one of those things comes with a cost, comes with a fee. And your, your planner or advisor is going to be very upfront with what that is. I always think it's worth it if you have a very complicated financial life to work with an expert that knows these things. Because it's not just about how are my returns in the stock market going to be. It's about how am I doing holistically? How is my entire financial life? You got to be in charge of the entire picture, not just what you're uh, doing in your portfolio. Well, I'm really happy you brought that up because what gets attention oftentimes, whether it's social media, the news, it's it's investing, it's returns, it's what the stock market is doing, because that's what's exciting because people are making money or maybe losing money depending on what's going on. But there's more, I think as we all really know, when you think about it, there's more to your life than what I'm investing my money in. There's so many other aspects that we should be concerned about. And I think that's where, like you said, having someone else to lean on, because like you can go to, I mean, like I said, Investopedia is a great resource. Listening to this show is a great, is a resource for people to go turn to if they want to learn. But sometimes you need something like dialed in specifically for you, like you said, and what we're doing is giving more broad information that anyone can use. But if you want something specific or you have like a very unique like financial situation going on, you may need someone to dig into your into your finances in a way that you're not going to get just by, you know, searching for it online. And I think that's where the value comes in, where there are fees associated with these services, but there's a fee for a reason. Yeah, absolutely. hundred percent. And I am the editor in chief of Investopedia. I've been investing for 25 to 30 years. I use a financial advisor because things became very complicated for me and I want someone to help me think through a lot of the choices I have to make. But to your point, Chris, it's not just about your portfolio returns. That's the sexy part. The stock market gets all the attention. It's on TV all day long. I'm out there yapping about it. The important thing is your holistic financial life. And I'll tell you something right now. Everybody can do okay in the stock market if they keep investing over time. Stocks usually rise 10% a year on average, maybe not every year, but that's the average over the last 50 years. But it's the other things like taxes. It's the other things like insurance and the other financial products you buy. A good financial advisor or planner can help save you money or help make you make a better decision that's better for you in the long run. That's actually going to be worth more than your portfolio returns if you do it right. That's the benefit of working with an expert. And that's why they charge money and the good ones are worth it. Hmm. It, no, no, that makes complete sense because when we talked about last episode, mutual funds and the fees and how, yes, there are actively managed mutual funds where there's going to be higher fees, but you can go with something simpler. That's uh, an index fund where the fees are much lower because there's not as much work involved in those situations. Yes, you go for, you can go for the cheaper option because you don't need someone in there, you know, going through picking individual stocks for you, uh, but maybe take those savings and invest it in, like you said, the fees that are worthwhile when it comes to getting the proper help for your specific need if it, it does arise. Absolutely. And I we encourage it. And if you can afford a financial advisor or planner, it's usually a great idea because they'll end up making you more money over the long term. Well, thanks for breaking this down. You've you put this in a way that made it, it, it really put it in perspective. So thank you. I was not thinking, I, I was even kind of like shaping my, my, my thoughts on this as you were talking. So I appreciate you breaking this down for us and breaking it down for Regina who sent in the question. And before we get out of here, as always, where can we reach out to you? Where can we learn more about what you're doing and the resources that, uh, that we can all use when we have a question out there? Well, come right in. It's investopedia.com. We've been here for 23 years. We're going to be here at least another 23, but it's free. <laughs> and there's a ton of information there. We've got 36,000 articles on investopedia.com, wow. but we're also all over the social media platform. So we got a TikTok channel where we're doing just basic investing advice and telling people what's going on out there in the market, helping the educated investor think about how to how to position themselves given what's going on in the news. But we also have a podcast, my podcast, the Investopedia Express. I got to get you on that, Chris. Um, you can find us anywhere and reach out directly, DM or come right to me. You'll find my email on investopedia.com. Uh, I appreciate you coming on. I'll put all the links to all that into the show notes, especially the TikTok one, because there's so much bad information. We need to spread more of the good information on finances on TikTok. So thank you so much, Caleb. I really appreciate the time. It's always great having you on. Hey, thanks for watching. And if you haven't already, go check out the Popcorn Finance Podcast. It's a short form show where I discuss finance and about the time it takes to make a bag of popcorn. Or you know what? You can just stick around here and watch another video. Either way, I appreciate you joining me here for another bag of popcorn. Hope you have a great rest of your week, man. I'll talk to you soon.